Hello, my name is Robert Anderson and I'm a member of the Minnesota Orchestra Double Bass Section. Today I would like to talk about some fundamentals of bowing and shifting for my instrument. To start out with, uh, bass players use two different kinds of bows. One is called the German bow. It has a bigger frog over here. The tip is a little bit smaller than on the the other bow, the French bow, it's held underhand, like that. The other bow is called the French bow, and it uh, looks like a big cello bow, and it's held the same way as a cello bow, overhand. Um, a good way to learn to hold it is to put your, the palm of your hand upside down like this, lay the bow into your hand on the first joints of the fingers um, and then bend your thumb. So then it looks like this. Your fingers are lying flat on the string. They wrap around a little bit. The first finger goes forward a little bit and uh, your fingers are pretty much at a right angle to the stick. So. So that's how it looks. And with both bows, you want to have your wrist and arm in pretty much a straight line. So they'll line up like that. Uh, some people, not too many, but some people advocate, advocate uh, a raised wrist like this. But it, it's hard to get a, a, a full sound that way. With the German bow, the thumb goes on the top of the stick. Your two fingers go on the side a little bit the way you may hold a pencil. Your little finger goes underneath and the ring finger kind of floats. It, it's not supposed to grab the frog on the inside, just, it just kind of floats there. There's a little bit of space between the frog and the palm of your hand. When we bow, um, first of all, we want to bow at a right angle to the string as much as possible. There'll be some variation of that, but most of the time it's going to look like that. Same thing with your French bow. Your basic bow stroke to produce um, a good quality sound is done uh, by starting at the frog without too much pressure or weight, primarily using the weight of the arm and the, uh, the bow. That's usually enough to get the string vibrating. If it's a loud passage, then, then you put more weight on it. But a regular uh, average bow stroke would be about like that. Then as you draw the bow towards the tip, you gradually add pressure. And then then you, repeat the, uh, you reverse the process on the up bow. And same thing with the French bow, of course. So there are three tone production factors or sound production factors. One is how much uh, speed the bow has. Slow bow is going to be not so much sound, get a little more as you increase the speed and it gets the, vi the string to vibrate more. The second one is how much weight or pressure you have on the string. A little bit is just soft sound. quite a full sound. If you press too hard, you're going to choke the string. So um, you have to be aware of that. Um, the third uh, sound production factor is how close you play to the bridge. So normally you're going to play around here. And that will vary on each instrument. Spaces are not um, standard. Um, every bass is, is different. So. This finger fingerboard may be longer than on some other bases. 
But anyway, it's about here. The string should feel supple under your bow. As you get closer to the bridge, you get a more focused sound that will um, project better. Um, if you get too close to the bridge, it starts to scratch. So again, you have to be aware of that and be careful. So when you're playing, those three sound production factors are always um, running in your brain, like a little computer in your brain that's adjusting for what you're doing. So now I'd like to move on to shifting. Shifting is something that's a, a useful skill for all string players, but it's especially important for bass players because we can only span a whole step um, between notes in, in one position. So for instance, A to B. Whereas in the violin, you can get a whole bunch of notes in that, in that span. So we have to shift a lot. Um, so uh, with shifting, you want to try to stay loose, relaxed as much as possible. But at the same time, you need to move quickly. So if, if I shift, let's say, from A to D. So you can see it's a pretty quick movement. What we usually do is use the string as a guide going up. So slowing that shift down somewhere in that shift, my fourth finger engages the string. And then if you do it uh, quickly, you don't hear the slide going up. Um, and you could do an octave. Um, as you get into your, your higher positions, um, you'll want to have your left arm lifted up enough, your elbow high enough, so that you can clear the shoulder of the bass. So uh, that's not getting in the way, because otherwise, let's say you're doing a D octave, if you try to do it this way, see the shoulder got in the way, it's, you can't reach it. Um, so that uh, simplifies the, the shift quite a bit. So uh, in order to um, have a relaxed shift, you will want to have the fingers just lightly uh, on, on the string, touching, you know, kind of lightly touching the, the string to the finger bar. If you're pressing down too hard, it's going to uh, impede your shift uh, and um, you will lose control too. The more, the more you are relaxed, the better control you have. You want to maintain your hand position. Um, the base hand position is like this where you have a space between the first and second fingers. When you shift then you'll want to move your hand as a unit. So not doing anything with your fingers in the meantime. Sometimes you'll see students bring their fingers in like that and uh, then you might get the note but then your first second fingers are not in the right place for if you have to use those fingers uh, right after that, that D that we've just played. So um, shifting your hand as a unit. Um, will tend to give you pretty accurate shifts. Same thing down here. Playing the bass is a little different from your other string instruments because it's such a big instrument and kind of uh, cumbersome, but you want to approach it the same way as, as other string instruments. Approach it in as relaxed a manner as possible. Uh, of course, relaxed doesn't mean you're going to drop the bow, but you want to stay as loose as possible. So even when you're bowing on the E string, it's hard to get it vibrating, but use your same bow stroke. <laughs> starting with not that much pressure. And um, 
the more you can stay relaxed, the more control you'll have, the more facility you'll have on the instrument. Um, and also you'll achieve better intonation. When you start to tighten up, your bow is not gonna be as good. You'll start to choke the instrument. Also your shifting is maybe not going to be very well controlled. So relaxation, so when you watch the Minnesota Orchestra bass section, you'll see that we're all pretty re relaxed when we're playing, you know, we're working hard, but uh, we're trying to stay relaxed so we um, maintain good control, get good sound. All right, so good luck with your bass studies, and uh, I hope you come to hear the orchestra sometime at the Orchestra Hall in Minneapolis.